Hi, this is Leslie. Hope you're well. In this video, we're going to take a look at the chart of the stock market, and I'm going to explain to you what this particular chart of the stock market, the S&P, is likely telling us. Join me. Okay, guys, let's talk about the stock markets. So what can we say about the S&P here, about the stock markets? Now, you may recall some months ago, I was warning of a potential correction on the stock markets. As a matter of fact, we were expecting a decline, a drop in the stock markets. And by the way, you'll notice that in September, we've had this 5% drop. I mean, it's 5%, it's not significantly huge, but nonetheless, we had actually a pullback, a major pullback here. And notice what's happened here. We've actually had a bounce, quite a strong bounce in recent days, in the last week or so. By the way, this bounce on the stock market, this three to 4% bounce on the stock market is something we were anticipating in the member videos. It's something I was expecting, as a matter of fact. Here's a clip. Based on the structure that we can see here, it appears that the upper side levels are more likely to be tested now as key levels of resistance between 4471 to 4488 on the S&P cash chart. It appears that the higher probabilities for a bounce towards this resistance range, again, potentially towards these levels of resistance between 4443 to potentially yeah, 4488. All right, guys, as you heard there in the member videos, we were expecting, we were anticipating this strong bounce on the stock markets uh, back to some key levels of resistance. In other words, we were expecting some kind of retracement back up to these levels that we've just tested recently, about the 4,443 level to 4,471 approximate levels there to potentially 4,488, the next key level of resistance on the S&P. So basically what's happened is the S&P, after that major drop we've had from September to October, which by the way, is by no means surprising because September and October, as I'm sure you know, are volatile periods. It's a volatile season in the stock market, the period from September to October. So it's not surprising that when you see these kind of declines, these retracements, these drops in the stock market in that period between September to October. And we've had a nice bounce, a retracement back up to the resistance range that I mentioned in the member videos. And here's a very interesting thing I want to bring to your attention. According to the Dow theory, and by the way, you may remember I did a video and an interview with Manuel Bly, the Dow theory, but here's the thing. Manuel Bly and Jack Shannup are both experts on what is called the Dow theory. The Dow theory is one of the most important and reliable methods of analyzing the chart, especially when it comes to stock markets. Now, both Manuel Bly and Jack Shannup, the Dow theory, have said that that drop we had in September to October counts as a secondary reaction. A secondary reaction simply means that after a major uptrend in the price, what you typically see is then a 3% decline, a 3% correction to that uptrend, which is something we had in September to October, that drop we had recently. Then the Dow theory requires a bounce, a rally, a 3% minimum bounce in the stock market, which goes against that initial drop, which is basically this recent bounce we're seeing on the chart here uh, on the S&P. So this recent bounce we had, this recent rally we've seen here on the S&P, that counts as the 3% bounce as per the Dow theory system. Okay, so again, let's just recap. Secondary reaction drop on the stock market, uh, at least 3% minimum. We actually had 5% drop on the S&P. And then we had a 3% bounce on the stock market. That counts as a second part of the Dow theory system. All right, guys, essentially what I'm saying is that two parts of the Dow theory system for a bearish signal have been met. But the third part, the third uh, requirement or criteria for the Dow theory has not yet been met. So essentially what I'm saying is, for a Dow theory bearish signal to occur, we need three parts to it. There are three criteria. The third criteria has not yet been met. The third criteria is this. Here's where it gets interesting. Notice this line on my chart, this dashed line on my chart at 4,300. Okay, if the S&P, if the stock markets were to fall below that low of 4,300, that then could trigger, that actually would trigger a Dow theory sell signal or a Dow theory bearish signal. Actually, some Dow theory experts call that a Dow theory bear market. So let me just give you more clarity on this point. Two stages of the Dow theory, uh, as per the Dow theory system, have been met. What essentially this means is that according to Manuel Bly and Jack Shannon of the Dow theory, is that if the S&P now were to fall and close below that key level of support, at 4,300, I guess an if. It's by no means a guarantee, it's by no means a certainty. As I'm sure you know yourself, there are no certainties, there are no guarantees when it comes to the markets. What we're saying is if the S&P were to drop and fall below 4,300, that low there uh, on the S&P, then that could trigger what's called a Dow Theory bearish signal 
a Dow theory sell signal. And again, some Dow theory experts actually say that's a Dow theory bear market as well. Now, whether that's actually the same thing as a bear market, what we call a bear market, that's debatable. But essentially, some Dow theory experts say, yes, that essentially when you get a three stages of the Dow theory complete for a bearish signal, that is the same thing as a bear market, according to the Dow theory. So guys, when you think about it, that means that level at 4,300 is going to be very important because if the S&P breaks that level, the lows they made in September, October, then, and especially, especially if the S&P falls and closes below 4,300, then that could trigger a Dow Theory bearish signal. By the way, guys, look at this amazing, really beautiful scenery in front of me here in Torquay. I would highly suggest if you have the time, come over here and visit this place. Really uh, picturesque and beautiful place to be here. All right, guys, so that's the thing, guys. Now, here's the thing. I know you're probably thinking, well, hang on a second, Alessio. Uh, what about the Halloween effect? Isn't seasonality going to turn bullish for the stock market between October to December? Correct, yes. The Halloween effect says that the period between October 31st, the end of October to December, end of December, is usually bullish and is usually quite strong. Now, again, by no means is that a certainty. Seasonality is by no means a guarantee or a certainty. Often people think that seasonality is a sure thing. Nothing is a sure thing, okay? So yes, it is true that seasonality is bullish and strong, positive for the stock market from Halloween, from October 31st to the end of December. But here's the thing, October hasn't finished yet, okay? We're still in the middle of October at the moment. So we still have another couple of weeks left to the end of October and anything can happen between now and the end of October. So let's keep an eye now on that key level on the stock market, on the S&P at 4,300. Because if, again, it's an if, we don't know if that level is gonna break or not, okay? But if that level breaks, if the S&P should fall and close below that 4,300 level, then it could potentially trigger a Dow Theory bearish signal, a Dow Theory sell signal. And it could actually increase the probability of that 12% correction in the stock market from its highs back in September. In other words, if the Dow Theory bearish signal triggers, it could likely mean we could see further declines, further downside action on the S&P uh, in the next few weeks and months. Now, I know you're probably thinking, what if the S&P, the stock markets do the exact opposite? What if the S&P instead rallies and makes new highs? What does that mean? What that means, according to Dow theory, if that happens, well, the entire bearish signal would be neutralized. So that means the entire bearish signal I just talked about in this video, the secondary reaction, the bounce, all of that would be neutralized. It would be canceled out and essentially becomes a bullish signal for the S&P if that actually happens. So it's going to be very interesting to see what happens here. What will the S&P choose or decide? So we'll just have to be patient and see which path the S&P chooses now. By the way, guys, before I finish, uh, let me also say that Emmanuel Bly and Jack Shannup of the Dow Theory, uh, they do a fantastic newsletter and uh, they talk about the Dow Theory and the stock markets in a lot more detail than I've done here, obviously, in this video. So I would highly suggest, if you haven't already done so, check out their newsletter. Many of you have already joined their newsletter, so thank you very much indeed uh, for doing that. But if you haven't joined the Dow Theory newsletter, the link for that is in the description. And I believe you get 25% off for the entire year when you join as well. All right, guys, thank you very much indeed. Bye for now. Cheers.